Hey, it's Jason Barra, and I got Tom Kirkham here, uh, CEO of Kirkham Iron Tech. Uh, Tom, you know, I was at a networking event this morning, and uh, a lot of the things that I mostly talk about with people there is uh, password managers and security awareness training. Uh, not a whole lot of people seem to be utilizing password managers out there, at least people that aren't our clients, right? Um, and as far as uh, security awareness training, uh, some people, they get it like once a year uh, and then the rest of them don't have it at all. Uh, I feel like it's a very important thing. That's why I'm always talking to these people about it. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Well, utilization is the the problem. And we we do a really good job. You do a really good job with showing the need for a password manager and continuous continuous cybersecurity awareness training, not once a year, but continuous. And in that, uh, we include phishing simulations. That's where you're testing your people continuously to see if they fall for these con jobs, these phishing emails, which is the number one distribution method of ransomware attacks, okay? So this is serious stuff. And, uh, and it does some other stuff like keep track of, uh, you know, passwords and credentials showing up on the dark web, you know, that's all part of password managers and security training. And so when we're sitting down with the decision makers, whether it's an owner or an office manager or whatever, we, ju we justify the expense because it's not much anyway, right? It, both of those products are pretty inexpensive. <laughs> Drop in uh, the bucket compared relative, to the other services. They're, they're what? It's like a drop in the bucket compared to the other services that they're more than willing to get, you know? Right, right. So they're buying all these other services, and it goes back to, and I, this is a whole different topic uh, for another time, another place, but it's doing, it's trying to use technology to solve people problems, okay? Now, what I mean by that is the decision maker, in this case, the decision maker will sit down with you or someone from our company and they'll go, oh yeah, this that security awareness training, I don't think we need that. You know, we do it once a year, it's an hour and that's all we need is, and so we justify the continuous training, the simulated phishing test, you know, just continuously see where everybody's at and those two minute training videos that go along with it little exams that we do, they only take five minutes a week, okay? Uh, but what happens is, is the decision makers or management or whatever, they buy those tools. But then they don't bake it into their culture that they have to, everyone, everyone, owner, president, managing partner, every single person on that network needs to do both, needs to utilize password managers, be diligent, stay diligent and actively participate in the mini trainings and the, the, the other trainings that come out. They need to actively learn how to use a password manager. And that's where it seems to fall down. And, and that gets back to what, what is under our governance pillar of the things that we have limited abilities to affect change. We can't change your culture in your organization. That's up to you. We can provide the tools, the best tools that we can find. We provide those. Um, but it's up to our clients themselves to adopt a security first culture. That means always be vigilant on these things. You know, don't reuse passwords. These are these are policies that's part of governance that has to be implemented and it's got to be it's got to be led and and you've got to set examples and you've got to embed it in your culture and that is our our number one problem i would say more often than not when somebody a new client comes on board they buy those two things and they are inexpensive and it just it really breaks our heart when we discover that they've got low utilization. So we have some, you know, we do, of course, periodic business reviews and, 
and, and things like that with our clients. And we go, what can we do to help get utilization up on password manager? What can we do to help you have everybody take part in cybersecurity awareness training? And, and that's, that's our struggle. That's our ongoing problem, even for those that do it. Now you, you've, everybody that you've sold, uh, in the, what, four months or so, five months that you've been here, been with us. Seems like forever, by the way, Jason's <laughs> been with us for longer, but this time, <laughs> yeah, this time it's only been four or five months, but, um, it, it, it's it's frustrating to us because here's here's what we know. 95% of successful breaches are caused by human error. Someone is letting, some non-malicious employee is letting the hackers get into the corporate network. And by far, the attack method for that is through phishing emails. By far, that's the number one threat, uh, vector of attack for ransomware is emails. And then when it comes to password managers, the big pushback we have from everyone, including myself, even though I've used one for over 30 years now, uh, is that uh, it's too hard to learn and it's flaky. And, and those, first of all, it's not that hard to learn. And yes, they don't, none of them work perfectly. And it has to do with some apps and some websites don't react well with the automated part of filling in the tradition, uh, credentials. And boy, when you have a website that it just auto fills everything, including the multi-factor authentication, that's just awesome, right? You know, you got to win then, right? Um, <clears throat> at, but but once they get into using the password manager, they wonder how they ever lived without it. So with AI, it's real easy to go scrape the internet and find out what some possible passwords are. You go scrape LinkedIn, you find out they went to the University of Arkansas. Okay, maybe you learn, uh, you scrape Facebook with AI, the criminals. They're scraping Facebook with AI. They know their pets' names and their kids' names. And it's not that hard of a reach to say, well, let's try the dog's name and the birth date of their oldest. You know, so Fido, uh, you know, six, seven, uh, whatever, uh, 85. And lo and behold, if you're not using a password manager and randomly generating 15, 20 character, 25 character uh, passwords, you're using something like that that's easy to remember. And those are easily guessed, especially with AI. And even worse, if you're reusing that password, now they've got access to every single site that uses the same credentials. And that, that, that's, that's maddening. And uh, I wish that everybody utilized password managers, but, but without exception, I've never had somebody come to me in the first couple of days and say, oh, I just love the password manager. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's working great. It invariably it's a hassle. And I'll say, give it a week, just a week at, at work. Not, not, you only use it once a week. I mean, I'm talking about where you have to use it constantly, give it a week. And I promise you, you'll get over the hump of the learning curve. And then at the end of the month, at the end 30 days, you're going to wonder how you ever lived without it, because it's going to create unique passwords that you don't even care what they are. You don't care if it's pound three parentheses open, carrot, asterisk, one, two, eight, seven, capital H. You don't care if it's that because you always have it with you. You're not writing it on a sticky note and putting it onto your monitor for the cleaning staff to see or other people that you, they have access to your office that could see it. It's not a sticky note under your keyboard. Everybody knows to look for that. You know, any hacker, any, anybody knows to lift the keyboard up and see what's underneath it, you know, <laughs> uh, 
and and, uh, and it's not in a spreadsheet stored on the network. That is the stupidest thing you can do. Yeah, so I, I, I used a really harsh word. If you're doing that, I mean it. That's stupid. It's monumentally stupid. I'd rather see a sticky note on a monitor <laughs> than a spreadsheet on the network with everybody's credentials. Yeah. Because one of the things that they're going to do, and you can do this yourself, it's a free tool you can download and you can run it a search for your entire network to find credential files and you'll find it. Do you think the hackers don't know that? Do you, do you think the hackers aren't doing that when they attack you in a ransomware attack? Because they are. Yeah. So anyway, I went, I got a little, uh, I got on my <laughs> soapbox there a little bit, but <laughs> I mean, it's understandable. I mean, it's it's a good soapbox to be on, in my opinion, at least. Um, but one of the, one of the things that I've noticed is like the people who are most against adopting it are the people who have to spend ten to twenty minutes resetting passwords each time, maybe like every couple months, because they don't even remember what they changed it to because they're not great at remembering. And then the password rules to setting it isn't something that sorry. <clears throat> something that they're used to uh, for the other passwords that they continually use. And it's like, look, you could spend five extra seconds using your password manager than wasting 10, 20, maybe even more uh, every couple months. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, Hey, let me ask you this, that the company mm -hmm. don't mention the name, but the company you mm -hmm. formerly worked for mm -hmm. was one of their security policies to force a password change every 30 days. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that time frame, but a, yeah. Yeah. So whatever it is, I mean, it was it more mm -hmm. than 60 days. It was, it was 90 days. Okay. Well, that's not too bad, yeah. but understand, and I'm talking to it director CIOs right now, understand that if you don't have really good password complexity requirements, forcing a password change every 30, 60, 90 days, may not be the best, most secure methodology. I would much rather have a 20 character, no words, totally randomly generated, upper lowercase numbers and special characters, and use it for a year before forcing a password change. And that is more secure. Depending on what your current password change methodology is, so let me ask you this was, did your former, I, I, I got to be careful here because I don't want to divulge, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I don't want to get anybody in trouble here, yeah. but it is, let's do it this way. It is very common to say, well, we'll make password complexity we'll require one number, one special character and a word will be okay, right? Maybe eight characters long, which is breakable within seconds, by the way, on a brute force attack. So that's not good anyway. But they'll allow a word, one special character, maybe a, a capital letter and uh, a special character and a number, whatever. But it's only eight characters long. Very often it is the case to where if you're your child's name is Samantha. It'll be Samantha one exclamation mark. That's eight characters or a little over number capital S and special character. And then when the 90 days comes up in your case, instead of it being an exclamation mark, they'll change it to the pound. What is that? Shift three. Yeah. Shift three, the pound symbol. And that's it. It passes. And then the next time they'll use shift four, it's a dollar sign, but the core password is the same. So sometimes they'll just get a partial password and they can brute force that account. And it, it would be much more secure if it was a long phrase with a special character and number and whatever else you want to put in there. And I'm talking about desktop logins because these are kind of a special case. Uh, password managers don't, you have to use your phone or another device to see what the password is. You can't use your desktop. And so in those cases, I will, I do want something I can memorize. 
Uh, and I want it to be long and I want it to be complex and a phrase is a good alternative. And then you can run it up to 20, 30 characters. At any rate, forcing password changes frequently allows because they get complaints. They get complaints because the password requirements are too complex. And so they're a little bit, a uh, little bit lax on when the password is changed, what it's willing to accept. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, one so thing I was thinking about case, that. In your case, mm -hmm. when, you for, when you got forced to password change, was it like that where you could easily use part of or most of the old password to create a new one? Yeah, yeah. So I do want to provide a little bit more insight into that, though. So one of the things uh, I feel like why that happens is one, uh, because there's no, there, or at least in that case, there's no password manager utilization, right? Uh, and then whenever it came time for that 90 days to be up, because everybody is absolutely pushing to the 90th day every single time because they don't want to go through the hassle of trying to remember another password just yet. They're too busy doing everything else. They don't want to try to remember a new password because they know it may not be a large amount of time, but it's enough to be annoying that they're going to forget that next password and have to reset it again within that first week of the new 90 days, right? Uh, but since they're pushing it to the limit of the 90th day, the system's locking them out and saying, hey, you can't get you can't get your work done until you change that password, right? So of course, they're, that's the next easiest thing is uh, whatever their password was with a new number, a new character, uh, because okay. uh, sometimes, uh, and I've, I've seen it several times where uh, you've tried to do something completely different, uh, but since you're under that crunch time of, I got to get back to work, uh, you try to do something completely different and then the complexity system throws it out saying, hey, that's not acceptable. It's like, well, I've changed everything and I've met these requirements. Why won't it let me change this password? And I don't know why in these systems, but I've seen it, right? And so it won't accept anything new, but if you do the next increment, magically it works. You know, if they had if they'd done it before that 90th day and had time to think about it, they probably could have done a more complex password. Um if they had a password manager that was randomly generating it, probably would have never had that problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, and I would expect some people would, when they, as soon as they change the password, they write it on mm -hmm. a sticky note and put it under their keyboard or something. Similar. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> explain too much, uh, but I mean, that's, right. it's, that's basically what happened, you know? Uh, yeah. And then yeah. other times uh, would end up through like, text messages, you know, and with, uh, before RCS, uh, with Apple and Android when they weren't encrypted, you know, uh, and then other messaging platforms, uh, where those passwords went end up as well, you know, whenever oh people were needing. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, yeah. Text it to yourself and then you can. <laughs> yeah. My work login password. Yeah. 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 So at, at any rate, that, that's, that, that's, that, that the, the combination of some of the things that I described when, you know, to force a password, that's really old school. There's research out there and forgive me for not being prepared and bringing the actual research, but I've seen research that, it, you know, it was uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, I started questioning that, you know, forcing a password change every 30, 60, 45, whatever it is. I started questioning that and I go, well, these are crappy passwords that they're storing, that they're using, they're allowing to be used. They're crappy uh, because they're eight characters or something like that. They're just not secure. And I said, you know, change, forcing a password change is what you did 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And along with allowing p crappy passwords. <laughs> and I started saying, there's got to be a better way now. And so I went out on the internet, the interwebs, and found out there's some other people in security who are saying, yeah, I don't, yeah, we agree, and this is kind of where we're going, and this is what we think. And I said, yeah, I can understand that. That would seem to be a much better way. And then, lo and behold, we started getting research that confirmed it was more secure. 
And so I'm just throwing all that out there. You guys are in IT. You can go out on Reddit or any wherever you go uh, to look at the forums and see discussions about this, and you're going to find that there is a better way. And basically, if you change the password complexity requirements much longer, much better, you can go a year or more without you know, uh, forcing the users to change their password and make their lives easier. The number one thing is, is every time they get in there every day, they're count that clock's counting down to 90 days, right? Wait, when's the nag screen start? 10 days, five days, you know, your password's uh, about to expire. Yeah. It's like, like 10 days before, uh, the yeah. 90 day. Yeah. But so, it, it, it doesn't so, matter because you want to wait till the 90th day regardless. Right. And so <laughs> you sit down first thing in the morning, your password will expire tomorrow. Do you want to change? No, I got to get this thing done. And, you know, I got to get in right now. I'll do it before I leave. Well, they forget because they're in the rest of the day for the most part. I, I mean, I know some of you guys have timeouts and all that, but, um, and so the next morning is where they get hit. And now the problem is a little bit more of a hassle because you can't get in. Now that's going to either impact help desk or the company's got some sort of password reset automation. But regardless, you're irritating your users and you're still not providing the security that you should. So anybody wants to debate all of that or, or wants to question the research behind it, uh, be happy to talk to. Send, send me an email if you can. Uh, just go on the website and fill the form out. It'll it'll get to me. Uh, but uh, there and, and it's diff and, and and the cases are different. You may say, "Well, Tom, that's crazy. We require twenty characters, and we believe that's sufficient, and we still want to do ninety day change." Well, just understand that at any one instant, at any one instant, those credentials can be compromised. Thirty years ago, it was very unlikely that credentials would be compromised in a 30 day window, extremely unlikely. And that was sufficient. That was probably overkill 30 years ago, making a change every 30 days. But now when, once those credentials get compromised, say at day 45, they're, they're instantaneously through automation and bots, they're already trying to exploit them on everything they can. So that that 90 day time frame uh, is actually worse if you're going to allow crappy passwords. If you're going to allow crappy passwords, make it 30 days, 15 days if you really want to annoy your users. But if you're going to allow crappy passwords, you you're you're not being productive. That is impacting the bottom line of the company and any CEOs and presidents and owners of companies needs to understand that. That's why security experts are the ones you need to talk to and understand the risk to your company. If you, as an owner or a president of your company, don't understand that your password policy has flaws in it, and you know that you get breached, you're going to be the one on the 6 o'clock news you're the one that's going to have to answer for it. Yep. So this is a culture thing, which is what started this whole conversation. And if you're not using best of breed training, defensive tools, and governance, culture, management, policies, and procedures, then you're not doing everything you can to protect not only your employees, the company itself, the shareholders, and the stakeholders, and most importantly, your customers. You're not doing what you should be doing. And, and everybody knows what you should be doing. If you're a security expert, you know what everybody should be doing. Now, there, there's variances depending on who your clients are or what kind of information you handle. There's regulations and compliance and all of that. But we know for 99% of the people out there, this, you've got to at least do this stuff, password managers, continuous cybersecurity awareness training, and XDR, MDR, EDR of some sort. 
firewalls and some of the other stuff that you're probably already doing. So I got on a soapbox again, but you know, it's getting to the point to where I'm beginning to get frustrated. You know, all these movies, you know, I talk about this in the webinars where we go through all these movies for the last 40 years, war games, Matthew Broderick hacking into a Pentagon supercomputer to launch nuclear weapons. Uh, very authentic from a technical standpoint, all the way up to modern day, leave the world behind that latest Netflix movie that came out this year. Uh, you know, 40 years of this from just Hollywood, we should be farther along. United States is the most vulnerable nation on earth, both personally, business-wise, I would even argue government, especially local and state governments, is they're still running from sometimes it's too much hassle. And who would want to attack me? They think, why, why would somebody want to attack my town? You know, I'm the mayor of this town or city administrator of this town of 5,000. Who would want to attack us? We, you know, we don't have any money, right? We're in the middle of nowhere. But that's not the real world. They don't care who you are. They don't half, more than half, a lot more than half the time, they, uh, they don't even know who you are after they attack you. And even after you pay them, if it's a ransomware attack, they don't care. It's a numbers game these days. So I really got off on a soapbox there. So I didn't want to hog all the time, Jason. So. <laughs> <laughs> you did. But these two yeah. books over here, right? Whoops. I always get That's it back. Like yeah. Oh, there it is right there. Right there. These two books right here talk about those things, those techniques and tools that should be in place. And they're readable, they, and they're not designed for hackers or, or experts. They're designed for small business owners, mayors. In fact, uh, the first book is about a mayor and a hacking on a little bitty town in the middle of nowhere. And what it had an effect on his personal life and, and many other people and uh, how it got solved. And uh, yeah. I, was, I was just thinking, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, whenever whenever you're like saying you know people have that mindset of like why 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 would they come after me i don't have any money and it's i think that they're thinking like we don't have any extra money to spend to get these people it's like no 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 they they want the money they're paying you with that's the money you know Sorry, well just, uh, if they're holding all your data and you're shut down <laughs> how much yeah. money is it worth to get your city back up and running your hospital back up and running you know these mm -hmm. i get these rural hospitals have budget problems i get these small towns have budget problems but if you're sacrificing improving your cyber security to, you know and maybe you start with a hundred dollars a month which is a whole lot less than that depending on what you need i mean it, it could be hardly anything but if you just start and you gradually get into it it won't be painful and and by the way this stuff's not expensive anyway you just got to do it. Just like you got to put fuel in your police cars. You know, you got to change flat tires on your police cars. It's it. And, and so it's real easy to be in denial that it won't happen to you because you haven't done the first thing in that doing an assessment, a vulnerability assessment, and just seeing what it impact it's going to have on your budget. And it's a whole lot cheaper to stop the attack from happening than it is to deal with it later. And if it's a ransomware attack, you've got two choices. Restore from backup if you have it and hope it, it's not encrypted too. Or spend the minimal amount of money to keep it from happening in the first place. A whole lot cheaper to do the left of boom. Boom is the event, right? Boom is, oh, we just got hit with a ransomware attack. Oh, geez. And they want 10 grand, 50 grand, 500 grand, 5 million, whatever it is. First thing, do we have 5 million, 5 grand? Do we have a backup? That's the first two things. And then you come to the realization that maybe the backup is not good enough. Or it's going to take too long because they only give you five days usually to pay the ransom. 
And by far more often than not, if you pay the ransom, you're going to get your data back because that's their business model. If they didn't do what they say they're going to do, ransomware wouldn't have been around over 30 years. And it has been around over 30 years. So um, anyway, it's a whole lot cheaper to concentrate on preventing boom than it is with dealing with boom by years and years and years. I, I've seen some numbers that's like four to five times cheaper to defend against an attack than it is to deal with an attack. I would argue, you know, if you're a town, you're not going to go out of business. But if you're a small business, you could very easily not only go out of business, but be hit with fines and other things. Uh, even civil lawsuits, there, there's just all kinds of fallout for private organizations or even charities for that matter. You know, all you, I mean, you know, a lot of charities really protect their donor list, their patron list, because it has a lot of private information about who gave how much and all of this stuff. And just imagine if that gets out there. And if you're a charity of any significant size, uh, that's going to be embarrassing, and it might put you out of business. And and civil lawsuits against customer data is growing exponentially now. In fact, that's the first thing people think about if you're a patient or a client or a customer of a business that's been breached. That's the first thing right on their mind, class action lawsuit. And believe me, there's plenty of attorneys that will take it, and rightfully so, especially if they were egregious in not addressing their security vulnerabilities. This is a, this is a life or death for your organization issue. And if you simply don't know where you are, you need to find out where you are right away.